Audi, Graz from the GKBC in a little kid's hat, AJ behind the camera. Hello. Uh, and over on the couch, we have special guests. We have Logan the Bear Dog. We have the daughter, Evelyn. And we have the very impressive relative, relative, Xavier. Logan did not get to be in the video because he's too ill. <laughs> oh, and yes. And Here Merlin. is Merly Burly Merlin the kitty. Hey, Merly. All right. Logan. Oh, there you go. Oh, oh I'm so happy. Oh, Logie. Hi, Logie. <laughs> okay. All right. They're going to go have fun outside in negative degree weather with winds and snow. Xavier. <laughs> Hear that? The One dog is trouble. on me. And I am here to do, I was going to do stats today, but I don't feel like doing that. Moods change. I'm going to give you my 23 worst books of 2023 that I read. These are the lowest rated books that I read this year. Oh, um, so people like to talk about the worst. Uh, if there's anything on this list that, that, that you like, please, 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 tell me why. Uh, yeah, tell me why, because I don't like Mondays. Um, sorry, we listened to that song tonight. But yeah, if, if you like any of these, I would love to know why. Seriously, I would. Um, the, the, the shot is going to move because the dog is... Logan. Um, right here, and that's okay. I mean, it, it's the price of Come being here, a pet owner. And Come he's here. very, very, you know dogs. They're not graceful. At all. Logie, lay down. Lay down, Logie. He doesn't know how to lay down. Well, anyway, let's get this out of the way. And it would be uh, apt if he knocked into the camera and ruined the shot because these are the worst books. So why wouldn't the quality be terrible? I mean, I am in the dark over here, right? You are. Um, so, I'm going to go... Uh, this is like number... Of the year, this is like number 180-something. Um, but... <laughs> I'm, I'm going to try not to get mad, but he, he... Maybe you could go put him outside or something. If you can do it without knocking the camera. Because he's... Ow. Very. If he lays down, are you good? Yeah. Okay. If he stay, yeah, because, I mean, I'm trying to make a joke out of it, but people don't want to watch a video where it's shaking constantly. Right. Because because a dog can't sit still. Okay. Anyway, of these 23, I'm gonna go 23 to number one, and number one is gonna be the absolute worst book that I read this year. You know. So. But out of the 200 or so that I read. You know, number 23 on this list would be like 180-something out of the top. So, because I read 203, so it would be 180. I'm not going to go like that, though. I'm not going to be like 180, 181. So, number 23. And I'm going to give the same format I did in my best video, where I say the number, the title of the book, the author of the book, page number, or page count, and then my rating. So, and if you want a Goodreads rating on these, just take my number and divide it by two. So, for instance, the first book on here, the first two books actually, are 5.11 out of 10. So that would be what? 2.55? A give or take? Give or take, yeah. So, okay, and I'm dying to see if anybody actually likes these. That'll be fun for me. So at number 23, we have a book from 1975, Fast Sam, Cool Clyde, and Stuff by Walter Dean Myers, 150, 190 pages, 5.11 out of 10. I got to be able to read it. <laughs> um, number 22, A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess, 192 pages, 5.11 out of 10. I know this is a favorite for some people, but I just didn't, 
I didn't like the, the, the fake language from the droogs or whatever. I, I just, it wasn't my thing. Number 21, Two Scott to Handle by Grace Burroughs. 346 pages, 5.09 out of 10. Uh, obviously, that's one of my uh, bodice rippers from this year. They were all so terrible. Matter of fact, there's four of them on this list right here. Um, okay, at number 20, The Golden by Lucius Shepard. 243 pages, 4.95 out of 10. It's a vampire book. It sucked. It sucked so bad. Uh, at 19, we have Broken Days by Anne Rinaldi. 273 pages, 4.94 out of 10. Another bodice ripper. Oh, and obviously, if you want to know anything more about these books, and you um, want me to talk more about in, any of them, I will say so in the comments, and I will suffer for you. Okay, at number 18 is a classic that I read. Jude the Obscure by Thomas Hardy. 413 pages, 4.82 out of 10. I don't get why it's called a classic, other than, the, other than how old it is. I was bored stiff. So, number 17, Forget Me Not Cowboy by Addison Fox. 370 pages, 4.73 out of 10. Another bodice ripper. Number 16 might ruffle some feathers out there if I've got any of the book club thriller people on my fan list because I, I hear a lot of things about this guy and I don't get it. I don't get it. He, he, it, it, it was predictable. The characters were, card, were, were cardboard. I mean, I don't know. I just, I can't say anything good about it. Uh, so at number 16, we have Every Vow You Break by Peter Swanson. 308 pages, 4.48 out of 10. Sheesh. At number 15, and Bart, if you watch this, don't get too upset. Um, I know that you needed a post-apocalyptic book because you, you had said that you don't have a lot. And I had just finished this one, and I sent it to you, and then I rated it, and I was like, oh, he's going to think I just, I'm foisting off my crap on him, but I didn't do that. It's Zone 1 by Colson Whitehead. 322 pages, 4.37 out of 10. And it was, I just, the format was neat. It was like done in journal entry. I just, I, 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 I wasn't really a fan of it. We're trying to get the dog to go outside because he's... Sometimes, well, you you know, you have pets. Good jockey out. Yeah, and he doesn't want to go outside in the, in the nasty weather. And obviously the two girls were not going outside. They have a hangout. Okay, number 14 is Cyborg 4 by Martin Kaiden. 205 pages, 4.30 out of 10. And Cyborg 4 is a $6 million man book, if you know who that is. Uh, that old TV show from the 70s. And this is there's a bunch of books that it was based on. Number 13 is guaranteed to ruffle some feathers. Because I, I read and watch videos and stuff, and I see constantly how people love this, this author. They love the book. They say it's one of the best vampire books they've ever read. And... I'm going to cause a, a, a fervor, not really a fervor, I mean, that, that, that's really, wow, I'm going to cause a fervor. Um, the people that say this is the best vampire book they've ever read are nuts. I, I suggest that you read real vampire books. I mean, because this, it tries too hard to have its own take on the vampire, and it just... I don't know. It's the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. 404 pages, 4.30 out of 10. It's the worst vampire book I read this year. And one of the worst I think I've ever read. And I've actually read quite a few vampire books. And if you'd like me to, maybe, if enough people want to, want to hear what I have to say, I will do a top vampire books that I've read. And I guarantee you, I could probably get to 
30 or 40 or maybe even 50 and Southern Book Club won't be on there. Anyway, um, number 12 is The Collective by Allison Galen. 335 pages, 4.24 out of 10. It's another one of those book club thriller things. And uh, again, I'm not going to tell you right now why I didn't like this one. If you want to know, I, uh, you know, maybe. But Okay, number 11, Giant's Bread by Agatha Christie as something Wolmancott or whatever. It was the thing that she did under another name. It's aimed more at kids. 269 pages, 4.14 out of 10. This is actually the book that put me off Agatha Christie for the rest of that year, for the rest of last year. Because I was reading one a month, and then I read this, and I thought, you know, I'm going to take a break from Agatha Christie now, because I don't, this sucked. Number 10, The Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton. 293 pages, 4.13 out of 10. It was the, the first book in the um, classics project I started to do. And it, it, boring, very boring. Not for me. Just not for me. I mean, the, the rich set in a different century in New York, it's just not mine. Not, not, I'm not the, the um, what do you call it, the audience for it. We're into the really bad ones now. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. The Swing in the Garden by Hugh Hood. 210 pages, 4.12 out of 10. It's a 1975 book. And it was just, again, so boring. I couldn't get into any of the characters. And the book was set up so that it, it was just like massive paragraphs that were this long, pages long. So you couldn't, you had to read for a really long time before you could take a short break, unless you like to stop in the middle of a paragraph, which what kind of psychopath does that? Number eight, Along Came a Rogue by Anna Harrington. 323 pages, 4.12 out of 10. Bodice Ripper. Terrible. Number seven, also, this, this number seven destroyed an author for me. I'll probably never read another one of her books. Loves Music, Loves to Dance by Mary Higgins Clark. 320 pages, 4.03 out of 10. Predictable, boring, terrible characters, nobody to get behind. <laughs> Number six, The Great Victorian Collection by Brian Moore. 213 pages, 3.79 out of 10. It's a 1975 book. I don't know. Just there wasn't really a, uh, excuse me, a point or an explanation. I don't know. I, I only read it because it was from 1975. Number five is another 1975 book. Not a lot of good ones from back then. Galaxies by Barry Malzberg. 128 pages, 3.79 out of, out of 10. By the way, 3.79 out of 10, that's less than a two star for Goodreads. I just hated this book. The, the, the format, the, the point, if there was one. Number four, The Deep, John Crowley. 186 pages, 3.69 out of 10. Honestly, these are 1975 books and they were terrible. So, number three, oh, The Female Man by Joanna Russ. 230 pages, 3.62 out of 10. I'm not against feminism. But this book tries so hard to shove it down your throat in every single word. And it, and it just comes across as preachy and soapboxy. And nobody's going to sit for that. So I'm not sure who the audience for this book was. Because all it, in my opinion, all it would do, from 1975, all it would do would be to turn people off. Of feminism and make them make make you think that well if this is what they are then why should I try to support the, the cause and if I've said anything that sounds offensive about it it wasn't intentional number two is the dead father by Donald Donald Barthelme 177 pages 2.08 out of 10 1975 book I really, really struggled to finish this book. It was probably the hardest book that I had to, that I finished all year. Oh, the format, 
the the interactions. I mean, talk about trying too hard to reinvent a genre. I think this is supposed to be science fiction. If you've read it, please let me know, because I'm still confused as to what I read. And the number one worst book that I not only read in 2023, but the worst book that I've ever finished. Because obviously a book that you do not finish, and there have been a couple that I've put down, uh, is going to be worse than anything that you do finish. But this is the worst thing that I've ever read and finished. Oh. And I've, I've, I've told the story of how it was a mistake, because I was supposed to read Forever by Judy Bloom from 1975, about a teenage sexual romance, which I did read and just barely missed this list on its own. Uh, um, but anyway, instead, somehow, I paid $10 for a book with the same title from the Judy Bloom page, and there was a glitch in my Kindle, and it gave me this, Forever by Diane J.M. Johnson. And I don't have a page count for it because I deleted it off my Kindle and I can't. All it shows me is like the, the size of the file now. You could, st you could buy it now on, on Amazon if you want for five bucks. But it was the worst book I've ever read. It was, it, I gave it, and remember, this is out of ten, not five. So you have to divide this by two to get the, the five star rating. 1.03 out of ten. And that was only because it got published and I finished it. But here's the basic of it. It's a like a Mormon family or something like that. And I, that's why I actually left gave it a one star out of ten. Because it did give some of the Mormon culture and that's not a culture that I know much about. So it was interesting to learn about some of like their uh, their activities and, and whatnot and how the children react to the parent. But woman's husband dies in the line of work. In the line of work. That's important. It's not like he was sick. It's not like he knew he was going to die. He, and he was in his 30s. He was very healthy. He got killed in his job. And somehow he created a will that forced and led his now widowed wife and their kids to, uh, for her to fall back in love with her high school sweetheart and, her, and his kids to accept the new guy as their dad. And just completely, you know, forget about their original dad and her original husband because he was just that selfless. Boy, if I die in the line of work, and I'm in my 30s, and if I die in the, line, in the line of work, I want you to be with the guy that was there before me. I try, now, I try not to swear on this channel a whole lot, but bullshit. Nobody is going to think like that. Nobody. And honestly... This author could be the author of a book called Nobody Talks Like That. Because the, the, the conversations are completely contrived and completely forced. Nobody talks like that. Nobody acts like this. It's, it's just the only good thing about the book is that, okay, great, you convinced somebody to publish it for you. Good for you. You know? I invite you to go to a coffee shop and listen to conversations and figure out how people actually talk and, and come up with valleys. Because this book is, except for the husband dying, which apparently turns into such a great thing for her because she finds her lost love that everybody wanted her to be with, there's no valleys. It's just all peaks. I mean, oh, there is a point later in the book where there's a suicide, but they turn that into a teachable moment and it, it brings the the son of the guy who died at the beginning closer with his new father. Ugh. I cannot sell strongly enough how bad this book is. Please, don't read it. Don't. I beg you. Well, that's my 23 worst of 23. Other than Forever by Diane J.M. J. M. Johnson, if there's anything on here you want to hear me talk more about, I will. If you've read any of these and you like them, please tell me why. And honestly, if you like Forever by Diane J.M. Johnson, oh Lord, let's have a talk.
because I think you might have been hit on the head. Anyway, uh, that's my 23 worst of 23. Hope you enjoyed. Sorry about the rant at the end. I, I, I mean, see, it's extra frustrating to me because I was, I was trying to buy a different book. And I read this thing thinking it was the 1975 book that I needed, that I was supposed to read for my project. And I didn't have to. <clears throat> and I feel like I, I, and I read it in one night when we were away at Frankenmuth in Michigan. And I feel like I wasted an entire night of my life. Because it's like, well, I'm going to get it done tonight. Oh, it was bad. So bad. But anyway, that's my, that's my video for the day. I'll see you maybe tomorrow for something else. Might take the day off, who knows. Anyway, I've been Graz. She's AJ. That's Logan, who uh, didn't really appreciate us doing a, uh, a video today. And until next time, read more. Where are you looking? Read more.